right, there you go. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Kios Value Working Group meeting of August 25th. Uh, please add yourself uh, in the meeting minutes. I have not attended previous two meetings, so this is for me will be a catch up meeting rather than more driving. So if some yeah. of you help me throughout the session, it will be helpful. I think Elizabeth and I can help. Because I think I think the two of us were part of that last discussion, which was actually pretty. There's a lot. To, there was a lot in the last meeting, I believe. Um, am I right about that? Do I remember that correctly? Elizabeth? There was a lot. The last so, two meetings, I think, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So you you left, and we just completely remade the group. Ha ha. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is fine. I'm hoping that is in the interest of group. So. Yeah. <laughs> we we think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So first item in the agenda I see is uh, develop health.md file model. So can anyone guide on that? So the this similar to the DEI.md, it's I think we were look we're looking at this as a signal of how to get help in a project when you're new. So it's different than how do you contribute. It's different than code of conduct. The, the whole aim of a file like this is to signal that you hear these channels that as a newcomer, you can reach out to and get help on specific things. And Elizabeth, fill in the blanks if I'm not covering quite all of what we discussed there. I'm sure I'm that's, that's where I was getting confused last mm. conversation because I was thinking that Tony was saying the help.md file would be a way for projects to signal where they need help. So oh. like if we had a help.md file for chaos, yes. it would be like, hey, we use we could use some help with chaos cast, for instance, yeah, like organizing yeah. that or we could use help with um, like this interview campaign. That's another thing that's kind of new and coming up. So it's more than like just here's an issue, go fix it and close it. Like it's more of like more um, descriptive of what the project, where the project feels like they're um, they're lacking or it could use some help, like our documentation or whatever it might be. But I, that's I where I was thinking right. with what Tony was saying. Okay, so were, were, did you have some of the thoughts that I had just articulated, or did I just like completely remember that wrong? <laughs> well, I mean, you remember it. I remember it, so I might be the one that's wrong. I don't know. No, what you but I recognize. I, ref, I can recognize what you said exactly as well. Um, Maybe so we should wait for Tony right. to come back and get his thoughts because he was. It was really his idea and his like he was kind of driving that. I think. Do you? Would you agree? Sean? Yeah, he, he was. And and I do think that the where a project specifically needs help was the most that we did discuss that more. Um, obviously had my own construction of what I want that to be. But I think that's not what we totally well, I, it's not what we spent most of our time on. Yeah. And I think it came from the fact that Tony had joined um, to talk about that business readiness model. And he was also saying, like, from his point of view as a company, like where his company should offer value to an open source project. Like that's where they were kind of struggling as a company and identifying where they could be of the most use to projects that they care about and that they depend on and things like that. And so he was thinking if, if they just had like a help.md file where we could go and see what they needed. And like if we if it was a good match because with what we have to offer, then it would be way easier than just trying to sort through issues and figure out like, what can we close? What can, what bug can we work on? Like it's a little more of a, a yeah. stronger kind of relationship, a stronger uh, support for As the project. The selection of a rando issue would be the alternative, right? So is that on a, a focus group level or a, a community level in on the entirety? Is so I think I think I mean obviously I think obviously. It's a file that would go in the root of a of a project, okay. and uh, I, I think similar to what what we might be doing with um, the DEI file, we would have a like. Well, I think the current idea for the DEI file is that we have a every you know you have a community repository where we keep that file. So perhaps if it's a project that has forty repositories, chaos for example. 
there's a particular name of a repository within any given org where we keep these kinds of things. <clears throat> so to me, I guess I now see the value connection. For a while, I didn't even see the connection to the value working group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, if it's, so if I was thinking about how an individual can provide value to a project versus how an organization can provide value to a project, those are different things to me. Yes. Um, so an individual, like the way I would talk to just a single person would be different than the way I would talk to like a company that's like, hey, we would like to support chaos. <laughs> you know what I mean? We like to bring value. Yeah. Those are two different things. Not different, but you know what I mean? Um, so if it's about like company or organizational value that can be contributed to a project, that certainly would not be issues. I mean, it would be, to me, it would be things like financial support. It would be things like, um, you know, helping, helping around, in our case, maybe like data science support. It would be around things like software development support. Like mm -hmm. these kind of higher level things. And then under right. that, of course, there are individual issues. Right. Or uh, DEI badging support. Like we're going to do this at scale. Like we could use a hand, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever Mozilla to, to really kind of make sure this thing remains stable. Um, and that's a different kind of help document. It's, it's kind of, yeah. From a value perspective, I think it's, it's expressing what the project needs in order to retain its value and the opinion of the people who control it. Right. Yeah. And that those are pretty high level things. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I would say that there's so between, between the help.md file as discussed so far and a project roadmap, I'd, I'd say there's some, some continuum of detail. Yeah, and, and I was thinking so too. And, and the question is, what, what, and maybe this is the discussion item because I don't think we got this far. Is what, what is that level of detail that we need in order for it to be a useful file and not, you know, platitudes like I need help with documentation. To me, that's a platitude. It doesn't give me any specific direction. It's like, <clears throat> you know, it's like I don't know. When I think it's like correcting a child, you should be specific so they know what they did right or need to improve or did not right. You know, if you just yell at them, it does no good. And I maybe that's a bad metaphor, but it's the same thing here. My my other concern is that like um, a help.md file buried in an org's set of repositories will never be found. Like, yeah, that's yeah, no, not, not a thing that people look for like if we don't have any way to automatically catch it and show it to people we do like we well so it would i mean in my mind it would operate in it would follow exactly the same pattern as the dei.md file and i think i so you're what what is what is the difference in the effect of the findability there, I suppose. It's that people aren't even going to look for it, so they won't use it. They won't take action. Well, the DEIM.md file may be connected to a badge. Mm -hmm. So it, its presence would generate some indicator. Of uh, it, it, yep. it seems to me that this is a non-repository item. Right? I concur. It, it seems to me that it's on the web page, right? Yeah. It's like growing you know, you know i mean so we're talking about how do you help chaos to sponsor it was one thing mm -hmm. matt was talking about you're talking about where do i find help for myself broadly speaking to work on this or broadly speaking these are the main areas of focus that chaos really needs which one of those second two are we talking about Because it sounds like Elizabeth was talking about where do I go to find help generally, and it sounds like Sean is talking about. I think you reversed us, but yes, I yeah, I think it's about what Elizabeth was saying, which is what does the project need help with right now. 
So and if, again, I think Tony's idea was that it would just help organizations identify easily what value they could offer to the project, I think is what the, the core of what it was about. And this is for organizations, it's not for individuals. I think, I think that was, well, that was his motivation um, personally, but I mean, I guess it could be either. So okay, well, uh, this is the first time hearing of it, so I'll think about it too, and then we could. So, me, if, so this is, I feel like more on an entire project level that, rather than on a, this working group level. So maybe we can bring that to the uh, general meeting so that all the groups. But I think Sean's points are right. Like it should probably align with the project roadmap. It should probably align with things like the mission or vision, or I don't know the difference between those two, but something like that of the project, you know? So, so the decision is that uh, we are going to take it to the uh, journal or we'll just think on it and we'll discuss it in the next Wait week. for Tony to come back. We could pick it up next week. Or yeah, and I don't, I don't know that there's specific actions, really. I think it was just an idea that he had that we could use for a metric or something. Like, it was just kind of a topic for discussion. I don't know that there's actual action items. Sean, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think ultimately it does this was to me it was implied this was leading towards a badge that the the metaphor of dei.md file felt foregrounded to me and and the the badge i suppose that which wasn't discussed before i think the, the point here is to you show up at a project and you honestly if you don't know open source and you've never done it before there is no consistent clear signal for how to contribute or get involved and i think that's all this is so I agree tabling it until Tony comes back is probably smart. Make sure we catch yeah. the true uh, intentions there. I have written that as an action that we went back to the as we had on the so moving to the next item in the agenda is uh, what is the value from corporate open source software point of view? Met you're breaking up a lot, Vinod. I can't yeah. hear you. Oh. Because I'm on another. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was moving to the second uh, item in the agenda, which is uh, this. Uh, what is the value from a corporate open source point of view? Metric model discussed here. Can anyone share the screen? Someone did. Thank you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, the second item I see is business readiness model that has been worked. So, Hold on. Yep. Yes, this link. Uh, okay. So is this a metric model that you all worked on a couple weeks ago? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we spent quite a decent amount of time on this. What is the premise of it? What's business readiness? So <laughs> if I'm a business and I'm trying to evaluate, it's it's similar to other metrics, but expresses more detail effectively. If I'm evaluating a metric from a business perspective, how prepared is this project to be part of my business? In other words, if okay. it might be the kind of decision you make when choosing um, Joe Bernetti's as an alternative to Kubernetes, that project doesn't exist yet. I assume someone will create it as soon as we hang up, but it's that kind of thing where you know we're evaluating okay. basically okay um so this is like you're standing inside of the organization yeah. kind of model and you're yeah. surveying a variety of different open source projects that may suit yeah. the particular need that you have yep yeah, exactly 
Okay. Yeah, and the way this tied back into the help.md was um, Tony's point was, well, if I have this great project that I think we can use, but they're kind of lacking a little in documentation, well, you hey, see. that's something that my organization can help with, so that's not a deal breaker. That okay. would make strength in the relationship, that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Okay, and these are the proposed things. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely Great. a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we worked on this each of the last two meetings to some degree. Okay. Maybe maybe just the last one. Here's this again. <laughs> it appears. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? The origin story. <laughs> okay. Um, so would this then kind of move, like, is it here? Uh, it is. So this is a model. I would say we can add it to the model because we are thinking of it in terms of model, what different metrics that can be used to assess the readiness of an open source project that an organization can adopt. Okay. Um, so do you think the process would be that we kind of accept these changes, you know what I mean? And then hand it off to the metrics model group? So you think uh, it's ready at that point? Answer to that question is like, I'm not sure how much ready this is. I have not gone through in details. Maybe those who have worked, they feel this is ready. I think the last time we got to the point where we felt like we'd done as much as we can and we needed a couple of weeks to reflect before we acted again. Okay. I, I, I think this is, an, this is largely developed uh, by the person not here. So uh, okay. perhaps we should perhaps we should table this and not try to finish it without the main person here. So just kind of as a note, I think what can leave the working group is basically like up to really just this first page, you know what I mean? And that's about when we hand it off to the metrics model working group. Yep. Would, would you agree? Uh, yes, we did the same thing for another metric uh, model, which we developed in the value working group, but like even before handing to them, we as a, a group wanted to make sure, is it ready for us to hand it over to the value uh, metric model? That is the only thing I'm like hesitant at this point. Okay. Is, is it ready for us to say, okay, we are good, uh, satisfied. Now you move ahead and develop the metrics or implement it in a way. So uh, my suggestion would be we should wait for Tony and see if he has any other things or I'll also go through this model and once uh, we as a group are satisfied, then we can move it to the metric model. For the <clears throat> and I see there are a few, it looks like, so an action item would be Vinod yep. to kind of um, like uh, edit. Yeah. Review it. Document. Um, you know, I just I think a few things, but not if you could. You're you're in the metrics model working group, so if you could yeah. kind of take a look, like things like user stories. I think right. we bring those as as um, points. You know what I mean? Like one, two, three, more. Like from a community management community manager perspective, this matters from a organizational yep. employee perspective, this matters. Yes. So I think we've been doing it more as a list. Yes. Um, I think our why it matters is usually pretty small at this point. Right. Why you would care about business readiness of an open source project. And then was the proposal from you all last time that, um, it also includes things like SPDX, <clears throat> like a yeah. These would fun. so yeah. When you're looking at business readiness, things like licensing come into play. So okay, it, it has some similarities with other things that are metric models. I think 
but it really it is significantly more focused. I mean, the question is narrower. Okay. I mean, the, yeah, that's the <clears throat> that's the distinguishing characteristic um, for this metric model is the, and I think it's a model is a model, right? Yes. Um, yeah, because the, it contains. The, yeah. So the, that it's just I think it's a little bit more narrow in its focus than some of the other work that's being done in that working group. Um, is very. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem that much more narrow. Like, what do you mean by narrow? I guess. So business business readiness is uh, the target is making it you know using the information to make a decision before becoming engaged. And yeah. most of the other models that I think we're working on presume a level of engagement already. We're not using them to decide. And now, do they would they apply equally? Possibly. I haven't looked carefully at the, the you know, I haven't ticked and tied the different metrics involved to determine similarity. Um, what if we, it, instead of readiness, then what if we called it like business engagement or business assessment? Yeah, that, that, that doesn't just exist prior to engagement, you know, the way you were so, describing it, Sean. Yeah, I haven't. <coughs> readiness seems like an important keyword, but. I'm not, if I'm remembering so, the discussions from earlier, I think readiness would be regarded as a keyword. Yeah, readiness as a keyword was uh, initially proposed by uh, Dr. Wisserman uh, in the issue 108 we have in the meeting minutes. Uh, so yeah, that can be, a, to me, it's more like a, as an organization, we are trying to assess whether that project is suitable for me to adopt or not. So, right. But I'm just, my argument against readiness would be that you could ask these questions to address the question that you have, Fanad, whether or not this open source project is appropriate for us to adopt within the organization. Right. Um, but then you may want to ask this question again in a year. Is this open source project still it's still viable? Yeah, still viable for us as an organization. You may want to ask these exact same questions and readiness at that point. It's kind of moved beyond readiness and now it's <clears throat> something, something else. That's all. So if readiness is important, that's fine. But it, it just, the way you were talking to Sean, it just kind of places this metric model at one particular point in time. Mm -hmm. And many of our other metrics models kind of live over time. Right? <clears throat> like responsiveness. I always go back to that one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. This is this is less of, uh, it, it is it's absolutely aimed at a, making a decision at a moment in time and not tracking the, you know, not, I would expect historical trajectory would be of value, but obviously after an organization makes a decision, they're probably looking at different metrics. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so then, Vinod, maybe the only other thing that I see is there's a list here. Yes. These are metrics. the different metrics. I'm assuming they've- Yeah, they're slightly list. different than this. So yes. you might wanna- <laughs> yes, I have to go through this. Get those things aligned. Yeah, I mean, we were kind of struggling with how you would define documentation quality, for instance. So that's where these kind of individuals. So it's like, almost like this business yeah. readiness is like a, a mega, mega metric model. And then no. like each one of those <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> smaller yeah. metric models. Because yeah. like, no <laughs> code thing. quality, like yeah. that's could be a metrics model in, his, in and of have, itself. So yeah. we have to address metrics. We're kind of going down the rabbit hole with the whole conversations for sure. All right. I think so metrics it, models cannot contain other metrics models. No, that is no. Not okay. We cannot do turtles <laughs> all the way down on this one. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'll go through this and uh, see what I come up with for the next meeting. Next item is issue 108, which I see it's the same uh, from which mm. this was actually evolved. This is the same issue from which this metric yeah. model has evolved. Okay. So it's part, part of the same thing.
Okay. So rather than moving this <clears throat> issue to the metric model, now we are developing this model and then we'll move that model to the metric model working group. Yeah, and then we can probably just indicate that in the issue. Yes, and be done yes. With it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. So next item on the agenda is item previously honed in the value that we'll discuss how to address the general meeting. <clears throat> so can anyone share uh, any thoughts? I, I think we were reflect. I think there was a moment of reflection on what concepts have sort of been the center of the value working group. And I think some of those retain utility, retain value to the chaos project. And as we focus the value working group where it is right now, we may we may need to just keep a list of these certainly social value um, policy questions influence these these things they may not be <clears throat> part of the domain of the value working group but we need to make sure as a project as a larger project we keep track of them somehow we did we moved them to dei Perfect. it's at the bottom we just added mm -hmm. another focus area for now okay. but like we don't have any met metrics so i don't even know that we added it to the readme or anything because there's like nothing to it, it was in the readme so it said in the value readme so i had actually i updated that is that what you meant oh perfect <laughs> okay. you updated it with the old ones or with the new ones i just updated it to try to indicate what we've been talking about right. yeah okay which perfect. is just it's just kind of you know removing the societal value component because that's now in dei um and just kind of just cleaning up this these goals and purposes statements through here Great. it's just because i think we had talked about we had looked at value from a variety <coughs> of ways how a community generate or how um the value of people's contributions so individual value communal value like how the community um, how value the the value that a community generates, and then how an organization derives value. We could say derive or contributes value, but like kind of this organizational value. As well. <clears throat> so we had individual, communal, and um, organizational value. Yep. So individual, communal, and organizational, and academic. So we did add. We then add the academic uh, in the readme because I could. Yeah, it. that's easy enough to do. Yeah. So I'll update that. Okay. I mean, to be, uh, I mean, maybe we just thinking about this, maybe do people want to keep academic value as its own working group or would that? be suited potentially just in organizational value because organizational it's kind of has that's that giant umbrella word i i think i'd be better suited to answer that after the summit since we're going to okay. have both industry types and professor types okay there and and sean will be there and yeah and that'll help us figure out whether we need to split this off or whether there's enough overlap that, you know, it's kind of like, is it an 80 20 rule or are they really yeah. separate levels, right? Well, maybe how about this? If they're separate, that's totally cool. Then we'd have academic value and maybe like corporate value. You know what I mean? We just be very specific there. And if they come together, then we would just have organizational value. Just a thought. <clears throat> yeah, let's, let's revisit. Okay. After uh, conference after September 9th, whatever meeting we have after September 9th. Okay, okay. So I shot him this to read this after September. Uh oh, I see an action item that I was supposed to do. Busted. I didn't do I could just, here we go. I didn't do <laughs> mine either. I totally <laughs> missed that. So there you can go. just delete them and then they're gone. Yeah, <laughs> and they're done. <laughs> That's how I, how I work.
<laughs> or we could just add by August 26th. <laughs> there we go. Right on target. <clears throat> Uh, nice. I've worked on that, uh, which was labor investment. We can review that. Okay. So maybe we should uh, give it a read uh, because it was previously labor investment and we had renamed it and changed a lot of things. So. I do appreciate the title. It's very direct. <laughs> Was there much that changed, Vinod? Like uh, in terms of the nature of the metric? Uh, like You're breaking up, Vinod. Not in you hear me? Uh, sort of. Yeah. Uh, I said uh, I haven't seen the nature, but it is more in alignment with the revised title. Okay. It looks like you mostly just removed things. Yes, I've removed and aligned it with the title, like to be more uh, like, uh, reflecting what we are trying to uh, show from the title. It's like how many hours employees are working on the project and the, how that can be assessed. Okay. Should this maybe be a filter? <clears throat> Should that be a filter? Yes, that can be a filter. What does this mean? Uh, which one? The basic metric like include? Base metrics include? This is uh, metric. So this, this will be more of a filter now, like a number of hours contributed, how, through which we will calculate the labor uh, hours worked and then assign a dollar value if the organization wants. So can I delete it? Yes, and maybe move it. Uh, if we had the filters. Well, but the title is the employee hours yep. work. So I'm yep. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, we're, okay. Okay. Was there anything that you wanted us to take a look at? I mean, I'm kind of looking at it right now. Yeah, it's like pretty much this one. If it is okay, then I'll move the device PR. So one thing that you should focus is like known contributors. This was old metric, like very of the first metric. So. so what is 
internal versus external contributors. What does that mean? So, uh, in, so internal contributor is what uh, our organization is contributing as an uh, You broke up again, Vinod. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying uh, uh, initially it was like uh, who is contributing uh, <clears throat> internally or externally uh, within the organization or from outside of the organization. But now it will be just internal contributors, maybe. What is, what's an internal contributor? Like someone who works at the company? Is, uh, yes. Okay, versus like, what if we said like, um, but um, then what's an external contributor? Yeah, who works at the company. So is the hope here to filter on like, if I work at a yes. company, I'm trying to understand how many hours I put into the project versus how many hours like Sean puts um, into the project? Yes. yes, and what is the ratio of, so that we can assess a ratio of our input at, as a greater percentage of the entire community. Like if how, in a community, 10 organizations are putting efforts. I how would I assess ever, how many? Okay. How would I know how many hours Sean is putting in to a project? <clears throat> It has to be reported by me. Uh, not in right? terms of not in terms of hours, but that will be like in terms of how much issues or code I have contributed. But this is yes, yeah, this is, this is an hours. hours. Yeah. But I've general. I've seen in uh, other projects uh, yeah. is that you can associate your commits, especially mm -hmm. when you use a certain email address with an organization or yeah. Do you think you can derive from hours from that? That would be my only hesitation. I could certainly see Sean making commits, but if the title is hours, that's all. This is a filter, this just doesn't seem like I could yep. do this filter. Yep, I agree. What's an issue tag? Issue tags is like uh, same, how many issues uh, that we have submitted are tagged to our organization or? Same, same problem though. Yep, yep. It was more uh, from revising from the labor hour uh, investment. Project sources, internal open source repos. I feel like yeah. I feel like there are tools out there that help you identify average hours for okay. things. Let me, yeah. I mean, is, if there is, has anyone else heard, heard of this? Like where you could kind of guesstimate the number yeah. of hours based on. Yeah, I'm thinking of like um, like code like code quality scanners or something like that that. All right, I need to do some research, hold on. If you find that, then I'm cool with putting these back in, you know? Open source AG project sources. So is this trying to like identify where those hours are being spent? like on internal repos, just random open source repositories and then competitor run or firm? Yes. So like in which projects are different hours are being invested in? Okay. So maybe like that. For project labor. Hmm. 
average labor hours to create a contribution. Okay, so I can, that makes sense. Average labor hours to be a different projects. I mean, these seem like I could kind of understand these because if I'm standing inside of a company, like I could just ask Sean, like how many hours did you spend mm -hmm. contributing to these different types of projects, our own internal repositories? Yeah. I could just, you know, we could document that. I could probably also ask Sean, like how many hours do you spend on the different types of contributions to these mm -hmm. projects? Um, and then I could, I think this, this last one is kind of, it's these two together. Okay. Just put in chat one, uh, maybe I should put it in a document, but one way I found to, to estimate it. Um, if you look in the source file, I think that's the, the index.js, that's the clearest at the top. It has some estimation. So it takes the history of the Git repo and takes the timestamps and it makes some assumptions like you start your day, uh, then you have some initial delay and then that's based off the commit. Yeah, that's interesting. So then it, it would bring those others back in a little bit if you wanted to use this like universally. Yeah, and I think another way to measure it would be the complexity of the commits. That's a whole different approach. That's not in here though, right? No, yeah. no, this okay. time-based. Okay. That's interesting. So this is bad in the reference. So. Yeah, add that to the references so then but then we would probably, where am I here? So then we would bring this back in. Oh, well, actually I, I went right to the source file, but the readme is also pretty good with the, the diagram explaining the that. method. Okay. Not bad. Okay. Yeah. This seems pretty relevant. Let me get it right here. So then, and this is, Nico, this is based on, what was their unit of measure? It's the commit, right? Yeah, it uses the timestamps from the commit. Okay. So is are, are those who are committing or voluntarily writing those hours? No, it looks like it's just an estimator. So yeah. this would be this wouldn't be contributors. Um, terms. And of course, you wouldn't know if somebody was just watching a, a video and having a coffee, or right. <laughs> spending a lot of time on it. So maybe I'll just say approximate labor hours. Um, spent by. something like this versus um, there's um, like this and then did you put that in here is that yeah a... that is number four. four okay okay cool elizabeth is that what you were looking for um, sort of. Yeah, I think it's close enough. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. 
All right. Um, I mean, actually, we we could use this visualization. We'd have to take a look at how this is licensed, but we could use this visualization. I mean, here as an example, potentially. I don't know what the license is on this thing. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that would be okay. Yep. We we can cite a source to this directly image of yeah I mean, yeah exactly just say that yeah do the attribution but that might provide some guidance because that's really what this is this filter is really about applying this part okay. You're breaking up again, Vinod. I'm trying to post the image on the. So, which image? There are multiple images. Well, I was just, it's potentially if it. Yeah. Something in here. I don't know if these, these are all different images. So. Yep. Okay. All right. Well. Yeah, we are at the end of time. Oh, uh, so. yeah. So, I, actually, I, I was I was done with my review so i'm sure elizabeth you were done too but we're out of time yeah shucks <laughs> too bad <Yeah. laughs> so i needed thank your you yesterday so i put down so good oh, job. thank you <laughs> you're, you're done too <laughs> all right yeah thank you so much uh, so we have reviewed one i think we have accomplished a lot today so good job yeah. everyone Okay, cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. We'll, thank Bye, you. everybody. Thanks. See you after Bye. two Bye. weeks. Yep. Bye.